Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Life on Point Radio. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to be changing it here pretty soon um, just because we I've come up with a different system for our podcast. And um, because of that, I am considering changing uh, the name of what podcast is hosted on uh, which is life on point radio but so far it's just been interesting because we get to you know this is really the ellie way it's not so much about um you know it's not so much about life on point and what i do in the dance industry although we are going to have aspects of it but i'm in the middle of a rebrand right now because you know i rebrand like every three months (laughs) it's not true but um i do rebrand a lot so um anyways welcome back to life on point radio this week's episode we are going to be talking about time uh time is precious time is what is all around us we have it telling us what time it is on our watches on our phones um we have it on our computers clocks everything and time is ticking so um don't forget to subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to and don't forget to rate and review this podcast um if you've never tuned in before uh hi i'm ellie um and um I am a business owner and a business consultant, and I teach people how to identify uh, what it is, uh, what the power they have to create wealth. And so um, if you'd like to know a little bit more about me and my business, you can go to the very first episode of this um, segment, this 818 Biz Chat segment, uh, and look for my journey to entrepreneurship. And so, yeah, we're going to get straight into this, um, and I am really, really excited about this episode the reason being is because time is something that is valuable a lot of entrepreneurs and business people and even in general nowadays we talk a lot about time and the value of time and all these things and I want to talk about time and hustle um this morning I was speaking on a um I was speaking on a business panel for a uh, conference called Rethink Creativity. And I was on a panel with my older brother, uh, Eric, from Brand My Heart, and um, a bunch of other business uh, owners and leaders. And it was really amazing to hear everyone kind of on the same page about what is going on in their business and how we've done things, how not necessarily going against the grain of business, but taking a completely different approach to what is um really what people are used to and explaining business and things like that and um you know it was just so fun to be around like-minded business people and such an honor to do that so um but it has been you know we were talking a lot about you know time and value and the value of time and hustle and all these things and the good news is you know the world tells us that we have to hustle harder and slave more and all these things and um you know one of the panelists brought this very good point up is that the world always tells us to do this but are we actually being as efficient as we need to be when we're doing that and i thought about it because this has been something that i have been actually questioning um especially in my last episode where we talked about self-care um i touched on it just a little bit but you know, we're always told, you know, you need to hustle harder, hustle harder. And the harder you work, the more money you're going to make. But necessarily that doesn't, that doesn't always, that's not always the case. And so with that being said, you know, time and hustle is like one of the things that it's like, okay, how do I create more time in my life when I'm hustling this hard? And sometimes the answer is taking a step back. And sometimes the answer means drawing back a little bit taking a step back and being like okay do i am i really doing everything that i need to be doing am i doing not just am i doing everything that i'm meant to be doing but am i working efficiently enough to the point that like maybe i don't need to be doing all these things and that's the reality i think for a lot of a lot of business owners is that we think that if we do 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 you know we're going to create more wealth or we're going to do all these different things and you know even in my um you know my my business and you know i go to these business conventions and they talk a lot about hustle and the importance of hustle and yes it is it is important to be driven it is important to um be motivated it is important to work hard however what is the cost of you know what is the cost of being a hustler and the thing is is that 
hustling. You can do all these things that can make people think you're hustling, but on the back end of your business, is it actually doing much for your numbers? Is it actually doing much for your business in general? Is it doing much for your clients? And, you know, I talked about this last um, last week when I was talking about self-care, which is, you know, the point being when you are in a space of caring for yourself putting yourself first is one of those things that probably 90 percent of business owners don't do that's like the polar opposite of what they do but the thing is is that self-care when you put yourself first as a business and not necessarily your business first you're putting yourself first your relationships first your um you know your um your mental health, your health, your, um, um, you know, your, yourself, you know, your life essentially, because the thing is, is that sometimes we make business our life and it doesn't need to be our life. Business, business is something that we do, not something that we are. And so when we value who we are and what we love, and yes, you might love your business, but when we value the things that are important to us and the things that we say we make a priority but maybe don't make an actual priority because we're too busy putting something else first that doesn't need to be first then how efficient are you being because you might be working on your stuff in your business or serving a client or whatever the case may be and your mind might be wandering somewhere else because of the fact that you're thinking i miss my wife I miss my husband. I miss my kids. I would really rather not be doing this right now. I would really rather not be here right now. I would really rather be doing this over here. And that's why it's very, very important that when we are doing our normal day-to-day things, and especially in business, you have to make time for what is a priority. So what are the things that you say are a priority? The things that you say are a priority, you know, for me, what is a priority for me? My priority is God first, my faith and all of that. That really helps me stay grounded and helps me in the mental health department and the physical health department and all the departments. It helps me stay anchored and to not go crazy. So faith is number one. Number two is relationships. My family, um, close friends, my boyfriend, um, anything like that, relationships come second. Currently third is my mental health my well-being and things like that which is not necessarily the best thing but I kind of lump it in with faith because so much of my mental health and my emotions and my well-being is based on my faith and so I kind of lump them together but when it comes to like working out and health and doing those types of things staying active I mean because it's part of my job um it's kind of easy to put it first in a sense because of the fact that it's my job. However, it does come on like the third kind of level of what my life looks like because if I have the choice to spend time with my family or to spend time with a friend or to spend time with my boyfriend or exercise on my own volition, I'm probably going to choose relationship first. And so that's just how I am. And so that is, you know, so number three is, you know, personal health and things like that. Um, But it kind of coincides with number one. And then you have, you know, your work, my business. My business is the fourth thing on the list because I know that if my relationships are suffering, I'm not going to be able to offer what I know I can offer to my client when I'm doing that. I know that if I am in a negative space with any sort of thing going on in my relationship, whether it's my friends, my family, my boyfriend, anything like that, I know that if it is not dealt with, it's actually very difficult for me to stay present in business and in my work. And, you know, sometimes you have to compartmentalize and you have to, you know, put things aside for the sake of work. I'm not saying that you are always going to be able to um, stay in this place, you know, of complete, um, you know, uh, complete 
perfect relationship if you want to put if you want to put it that way um but you are going to experience times where things get hard and you're gonna have to compartmentalize but sometimes if you are able you know like for instance like me and my mom will sometimes you know we maybe one of us wakes up cranky and we're just bickering before i leave work it's important to me that i fix that problem and i fix what's going on in the relationship with her before I step into my office because that's going to weigh on me and affect me way more if I don't deal with it. And um, so that's just one example. But so that is like number four on the list is business. And so then then I compartmentalize and I do the four quadrants. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but the four quadrants is basically the levels of importance. And so sometimes, you know, throughout the week, I'll do a four quadrants for the week because, you know, I have a lot to do in a week. You know, I have, you know, several clients that I'm serving. I have several tasks that I'm doing for these clients and their projects. And on top of that, I'm working part time as an employee for someone else. And on top of that, I am also volunteering. And on top of that, I'm going to be starting school here pretty soon. So when you add up all the hours I'm doing, whether it's leverage time or non leverage time, I'm working about 80 hours a week, right? And so then you have to compartmentalize and do those types of things and just work in your brain. Okay, how is this working? And so for me, a big thing has. I've learned is the more rested I am and the more I put my mental health and my self-care, my self-care that I talked about last week, um, when I put that first, I'm actually able to offer more and operate at a better velocity, if that makes sense. I'm actually better at my job when I am more well-rested. And so sometimes that causes me to take a step back from other things that maybe um, I'm you know, volunteering to do if it's not of the most utmost importance, I'll take a step back from that so I can, you know, take a class or stretch or whatever the case may be. Because sometimes, like physically speaking, I teach, you know, 11 classes a week right now and it is a lot of classes and it's a lot on my body um, because I'm also a professional ballet dancer. I teach a lot of classes. I like to dance, things like that. And I want to stay in shape. But sometimes when I get off of teaching, my body is incredibly sore and I know I need to take care of my body. So I'm going to take the hour that I would normally spend that I have reserved for catch up work or whatever the case may be. I'm going to take that hour and roll out or stretch or whatever the case may be. And so you have to know what your time value is, right? And so even recently, you know, I've been drawing back from certain things, you know, people asking me, um, you know, hey, I need help with this. I need help with this. And I need help with this. I've been utilizing my boundary of saying no, because I know that I don't have the time. And I know that if I do that, I'm going to do it. And something else that I need that I have made a priority is going to fail. And so because of that, it has been hard to find that balance. And it's been also kind of hard to continue doing that, you know, because I really struggled with people pleasing and I really struggled with the idea of, you know, I want to be everything for everyone in all capacities. And I have realized that that is so not practical. It so doesn't work. And so because of that, I need to learn, okay, I need to learn how to say no. And this was something that I was, you know, I was thinking about one day and I was just like, you know what, I need to learn how to be okay when people are upset when I say you need to figure it out you need to ask someone else you need to you know I can't be there for you right now because I'm doing other things that are taking more time and more of my priority and it's been hard you know sometimes people aren't used to that especially with me because I have served in the capacity of let me be everything that you need but I've also realized that if I'm helping everyone else in that aspect and I'm not talking about client wise but I'm just talking about you know I have friends or, you know, in my voluntary work, you know, you have to you have to set a boundary when that is not your priority and that is not your lane. And that's something that I've been really um, grasping recently is, is this in my lane? It might be my strength, but is this what I'm supposed to be doing right now? 
And if it doesn't match with what's in my lane, then I have been rejecting it, not because I don't want to and not because I don't want to help, but because I need to learn how to value my time. And so when I'm valuing my time, you know, when I say no or I set a boundary, I'm valuing my time and I'm valuing that boundary of this is not, you know, my work is not going to cross over into my time with my boyfriend. That's intentional time because we have our time, you know, sometimes I can take my work remote and so I'll just go, he'll do homework, I'll do work and it works out great. But when we're in intentional time, work is not going to cross over and I used to do this a lot. I used to allow work to cross over into our intentional time, whether it was with my boyfriend, my dad, my mom, anybody, you know, work would always come into play somehow. And then I realized I was like, that's not okay because then I'm turning this relationship that we're developing into um, a relationship where I'm not present in the moment and I need to learn how to be present in the moment. And so I've learned that if I'm going to have intentional time with people, then I need to be fully present. And that looks like me saying to my own self, you're going to value the time that you have set aside for your friend who is also valuing the time that they have set aside because they want to spend time with me. And I need to value that person's time just like they would value my time. And so it goes both ways. You know, you you can't just value your own time and then expect everybody to follow your timetable. No, you have to work around some, sometimes, especially with clients, you have to work around their schedule and sometimes I have to move things around, but I'm okay with that because I know the time that I have to offer and they also know the time that I have to offer. And so we just make it work. The thing is, is that when a client really loves who you are and what you have to offer, they will make the time for it. They will make it happen. And just the same with me, if I really want to work with a specific client because I value them and I love working with them and I want to help them and it's worth it to me, um, then I will value their time and I will say, you know, I appreciate your business. Let me work around you. And Not all of my jobs are like that, you know, because I am a service business. I have a lot of different moving parts. I have a lot of different services that I offer. And so recently I've really scaled back and my business has taken a pivot and really has completely changed the way that I do business because whereas it was, you know, very much service based, you know, I had housekeeping and childcare service and house, um, you know, house administration and helping with things like that organizational type things. Now my main focus is business consulting and um, and teaching dance. And those are the two most important things that are in my lane currently. And so for me, those are the clients that I like to take. And those are that's my audience. Now, it doesn't mean I'm not going to do graphic design. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to do certain things for other people if I have the time to do it. But if I know that it If I know that I have no free time in my work schedule and I know that I am very um, strict with the time that I have when it comes to the clients I already have, then it's going to be different and I'm not going to do it the same way that I would normally do it. And so it's been really fun to kind of um, just really explore this idea of time. And so I want to talk about time batching. Now, this is something I learned from a woman named Amy Landino and she is like an administrative boss. Like she knows how to do the schedule. She knows how to do uh, productivity really well. She's got the hustle down. But I love her calendar system because it has really helped me stay in the zone. And this is the thing about me. I can weave in and out as I need to, but someone like my mom cannot weave in and out of different things. We work best, and I think just as human beings, we just work best when we focus all of our energy and our efforts on one thing and then leaving it and then moving on to the next thing. And so recently I did a little workshop um, for some students that we have for a project that I work on, for a project that I work on with a school. And um, 
we talked about time batching. And so for me, you know, I have Google Calendar. I think Google Calendar is just the absolute best. And so I love my Google Calendar. If you're looking on the YouTube, I'm going to show you um, what my Google Calendar would look like. So this is kind of... Um, this is kind of like a day in the life of Ellie, right? And you'll see different things. And so I will actually use, um, I will actually block out bigger sections of time that have to do with business and task different projects to different days. So for instance, on Mondays, I work for my mom, I help her out. And so Monday, the biggest chunk of time is going to be spent helping her. And then I have about two hours to maybe, if I'm lucky, a two and a half hour window of things that I can actually do um, that have to do with other projects that I know maybe have a little bit of an emergency thing um, that need a little extra work, things like that. And so when I do it that way, and then, you know, Tuesdays, those it was my day off but because i am teaching on tuesdays it's not my day off so the bigger chunk of time for that day is for me to relax and then on wednesdays you know i focus a lot on the church you know on the projects that i'm working on for them i have the biggest block of time set aside for church and then everything else kind of falls into place where it does you know thursday i'll work on another project for another client friday i'll work on another project for another client and so on and so forth and it actually has made me so much more productive than i could have ever imagined because i'm being very intentional with my time and so sundays are the days that i calendar block i outline my week these are the tasks that need to get done these are the things that need to get done these are all the things that i need to do and um when i do that it has been uh really 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 great and so um i've been able to make lists for all the different projects that i do and all the things that need to be done for that time being and when i do that i find that it is so much more impactful and i get way more done and so you know there's a there's one project that i'll use an example so um i have three hours um on wednesday to do this particular pro to work on this particular project and so i on sunday i've already written out all the things that my goal is to get done for the week i have a master list for all the things that need to be done for every project that i'm working on and then I'll select things from that list that need to be done within that week. And then I will make sure that the list is there. And then in that three hours, I'm going to get as much of that entire list, um, the one for the week, done that I possibly can. And sometimes I get it all done within that window. And sometimes I don't. And I have to move it into like my makeup work time. But it has made me 10 times more efficient to do it that way and it is just the best thing that I could ever recommend so that is something that I consult a lot of people with is calendar blocking and their time batching um, I call it time batching you can call it whatever you want but if you're interested in that service I actually have a um, free consultation you can go to lifeonpoint.org and you can schedule a free consultation with me um, at the bottom and uh, uh, you can put in a request and um, my team will email you so that I can uh, get in contact with you and set up a time to give you a free consultation and kind of talk to you about um, whatever it is that you need consulting in your business. But also, um, if you wanted to schedule something specific like a, t a calendar block time, uh, then I would explain to you a little bit more, go into a little bit more detail, and then we would set up an appointment to actually work on it. And so it's just been so, so amazing like that has been really great for me to learn how to be very intentional with my time and so um you know there are times where i get a little lazy and i get a little laxed and i find that i'm not as productive during those weeks but when i am on top of it man i'm on top of it <laughs> and it is so good and so i just want to encourage you that you know life gets busy don't be busy because the world says you have to be busy or the world says that it's cool to be busy because it is just as important to schedule time for yourself and your family and 
to do things that you enjoy that are outside of work, you know, hobbies and things like that. It's important to do that while you're working. You have to have that work-life balance. And right now, I think our society preaches work-work balance, and it's not actually a good balance of work and life. And, you know, that might look different for everybody. You know, some for some, it might look like spending more time with their kids. It might look like spending more time with um, their families or friends. For me, it, it looks like spending time with my family. It looks like spending time with the friends that really, really matter to me, the ones that I'm very close with. It looks like nurturing those relationships and making time for them, even if it is once in a while. It looks like making time for my boyfriend because that is a relationship that I am trying to um, develop for the long term. And, you know, it's just like business. You know, if, if, if you're going to Um, be in business, you need to be really, you know, be aware that, you know, you're going to sacrifice a lot and that you have to sacrifice the short term for the long term. And, you know, for me, relationships are the same way. If you want long term relationships and you've got to sacrifice some things in the short term and it's not always easy and sometimes it is really easy, but it's not always going to be this thing where you're you know, you don't need to be working 80 hours a week. There's no reason for it, you know? And, you know, I know that we live in an economy where, at least here in America, we live in an economy where we are working to get paid. We are in doing what we do mostly to get paid. But what if we figured out a way to create our own economy and to reverse that whole thing around and work because we want to and to be able to get paid what we deserve and all these things you know I think it's so telling right now that you know so many people have not gone to b- back to work they're still on unemployment and you know the people that are working are getting taxed and the ones that are not are not you know and I'm not saying that they should be I'm just saying you know it's it's not setting us up for success and so when it comes to going against not going against the grain of the system because we're not trying to rebel but how do we make a life for ourselves when we are relying on help from the government or help from our jobs like what if our jobs go under you know what i mean and sometimes it looks like taking a risk it looks like taking a step it looks like taking an opportunity to really decide do i want more than just working a nine to five job and if you want to work a nine to five job stay in that nine to five job i'm not saying that you should leave i'm saying that i know for a fact that business is not for everyone but if you want more out of life than what your nine to five job is giving you then you might want to consider business you might want to consider you know how to start something you might want to consider um the options that are available nowadays and it is just so so amazing to be able to talk about those things because you know it's to talk about what business has done for me is just so like I could be here all day (laughs) like and Business has really transformed my way of thinking about finances, even in the way that I care for my own personal finances, the way that I care for my business finances, like all these things. It has taught me so many valuable lessons that I will never let go of and I will never leave business. That's the thing. Like, even if I change my business, even if the face of my business changes, even, you know, this, that or the other thing, you know, I will always be in business in some shape or form because it is meant for me it is meant for my lifestyle and the lifestyle i want to create and so if you are somebody that wants to create your own lifestyle business is the way to go because even business is creative business is coming up with ideas and solutions and um you know coming up with these things and offering it to people and some people aren't going to want it but the right ones will want it and you will be so surprised when you find how many people just love and adore you know people for what they have to offer and when you are a blessing to your community i mean essentially i think of it this way businesses are a blessing to their community one 
They're providing jobs for other people. Two, they are providing help. They are providing a service. They're providing a product that's going to help people. And three, it's a way to create revenue, not just for yourself, but to also create revenue for your employees. You're helping your own, you're helping the economy, the big economy, the grand scheme of economy, and you're helping them by having a business. And I think, you know, we can talk crap about the government and the way that the economy is run right now taxes and all these things but you know I was talking to somebody the other day and every single time that I talk to them they always say something profound and I was just like wow and he said you know I had to go get you know I got a hole in my tire basically and I spent about three hours at the tire shop because they were taking a while and you know and you know, he said, um, you know, I was like, thank God I didn't have to buy two whole new tires because that would have been a lot of money. But, you know, something he said was, you know, these businesses might be praying for favor. They might be wanting favor, whatever the case may be. And you are taking part in their favor. You are um, a part of their favor. And that really spoke to me because Essentially, what he was saying is that you are part of bettering the livelihood of someone else when you buy their service or product. And I was like, like, we think of that only for ourselves, right? But that's a little bit of a selfish perspective when you're thinking of it of only for yourself. Like, what about the other businesses, the people that you're buying from? You know, what about those people? These businesses are creating jobs for other people. And when you buy a product or you do something like that, you're not just buying a product. You have to look at it as an investment, right? So if you're looking at it as an investment, you're investing into someone else's life. You're investing into that business. You are investing into someone else's livelihood. And we can talk about how much people don't like how much this person, this corporation is making and yada, yada, yada. But the reality is, is that's negative thinking. And that is just ridiculous. Why would we spend so much time talking negatively about something when we realize that there are people all around in that store, like Walmart, there are people all around in that store that work in that store. And Walmart provides jobs for these people. You know, people can talk, you know, crap on Jeff Bezos. And I'm not saying that he's somebody that has done all the amazing things in the world, but his company, and I'm not saying that shady things don't go on in the background. That's a completely different story. However, the thing about business is that business creates opportunities for people to better their livelihoods. And that's just, that's the thing is that we don't think about that is that when we are buying from someone else, we are providing a small, we are providing, we are offering a small sense of something to better one of those employees' um, livelihood. And, you know, you can take it how you want it. Like, you can think of it in any way that you want it. I just thought that was so profound. And I was like, yeah, it's, you're so right. Everything that I do Everything that I buy when I buy from a store or I buy from a company or whatever, I'm investing into the person. I'm investing into the business. I'm investing into someone else's livelihood. And when I look at it like that, it doesn't make me so frustrated when I have to spend $400 on tires. (laughs) Like, yes, maybe they make way more money than me, but... When you look at it of a space of I want to bless these people, even if they already see on the out seem on the outside like they're already being blessed beyond belief. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You don't know what's going on. And if I can offer my money when I purchase something as a blessing to to this business or as a blessing to the person that is serving me, the clerk or the server or whatever, then I'm investing in them. And that to me is worth it because we as business people, what whatever language you want to put it in, we are meant to be a blessing to other people. We are meant to be a blessing to our community. And, you know, it's really put me in this space of realizing, you know, like I'm really lucky that I can afford to bless someone else's business, whether it's a corporation, a huge corporation, or a small business. I'm very fortunate that I can invest into some of these people's lives. I'm very fortunate that, you know, I live the lifestyle that I do. Even if I don't have 
enough money to create my own livelihood yet you know or whatever the case may be you know maybe i'm still living with my parents who cares i can you know save and save up for my livelihood and at the same time be able to give to other people and this was something that you know god had said to me a little while ago um you know and again you guys know i'm christian and you know this is life and business through my perspective and so you know one day i was spending time with god and he said if you take care of my people i will take care of you and so when there's people that need money you know maybe they're not homeless but they're struggling financially i'm able to give them something and i know god is going to take care of me even businesses or corporations or whatever the case may be you know COVID has really impacted a lot of businesses even businesses that are just like the magnitude of money that they make is just ridiculous you know it's still everybody got a cut of some sort and some people thrived and that's great but you know especially some of the small businesses that are in my city a lot of people got shut down and then there's a lot more people that are struggling and so to be able to say hey i'm gonna buy from you just because i care about your business and i don't want to see you go under that is a huge blessing because you have no idea the overhead costs that it costs to do a restaurant or to do a storefront or anything like that it is just absolutely bonkers ridiculous and it's expensive that's why I love providing a service because I don't have to have inventory and my overhead fees are very low and very minimal. But, you know, it's even as a independent distributor of, you know, a multi-level marketing company with a great product, you know, which we will talk about probably in the next couple of weeks. There's a lot. There's a lot of overhead that goes into it. There's a lot of work that goes into it. And when even when you support, you know, I have no problem supporting my friends as long as it works for me. You know, I, I love supporting my friends. And if the product is good, then I'll be able to buy from them. But if I'm not able to, you know, because I, I want to see them blessed. And I think there's this big stigma about competition among other people. And I know this has kind of gotten away from time, but <laughs> um but there's just this you know it's again going back into a space of gratitude um so yeah we totally got off the topic of time but that is okay this has been such a great um you know conversation and you know when we when we serve other people you know there's this huge stigma about competition and competition amongst businesses and things like that and people fighting for clients and things like that and honestly it needs to stop like I'll go I'll go off on another episode about this because this is just everywhere it's it's in everything like it's not just in business it's in everything and I've experienced it um I've been on the not on the side of being the competitor but on somebody that the competition has directly affected um I it's called politics you know it's called favoritism whatever the case may be it's it's competition and you know there has to be a healthy amount of competition but also a healthy amount of support and so for me you know like for instance me and Eric you know Eric has a branding business he has a marketing business I have things in my business where I offer some of the services but I don't offer everything he has to offer and so when I when my clients come to me asking for something specific i may not be able to offer them what they what i know they need and so i'll send them to him or you know you know there's been times that he's brought me people there's like oh yeah i've heard about you from eric and i you know i wanted to come check it out and you know not just you know handing out someone else's business card but even knowing what your strengths and your weaknesses are and being humble enough to say hey i can't help you here but i know someone who can and bringing them and that is a blessing to someone else's business and i think we need to get outside of the stigma that of being so afraid to lose clients that we trap them in a way we in in our minds they become ours and we become possessive over people people have free will to walk in and out of stores or to walk you know to click an order from wherever they want and to choose whatever service they want and we as business owners need to respect that and uphold a level of relationship with the clients that we do have but not shame them when they go somewhere else you know and that's just something i've really noticed recently has been happening quite a bit um not necessarily directly to me but indirectly affecting me and seeing um some of the things that are going on it's just it's very hard to watch and um you know i think when you value 
your clients and you value the relationship, you know, half of business is valuing the relationships that you create with others. And I think that's a huge part of business that most people don't talk about. And so, you know, it is a long conversation that we just got into. You know, I talked about time. I talked about hustling. I talked about um, healthy competition. You know, we just went all over the place with this episode. That's what tells, (laughs) I'm sure all of you kind of notice I didn't have notes this time but you know I think this was a good conversation nonetheless and I hope you're encouraged by it you know I hope that you draw something from this episode um as far as you know what it looks like to you know redefining success in your business and also not being so um not being so narrow-minded but also being able to focus but at the same time be able to see from the big picture and so um you guys are absolutely amazing i so appreciate all of you and um if you're someone that struggles with balancing your time and all those things again i have that service available to you and so if you would like to book a consultation with me please go to lifeonpoint.org slash contact and go ahead and let me know uh what your needs are and we can and have a, a free uh, complimentary consultation phone call um and I want to know your thoughts. As always, definitely connect with me on Instagram at The Ellie Way and join my free Facebook group, which is my free um, Facebook group, 818 The Power to Create Wealth. And all the information is down below in the show notes as usual. Uh, don't forget to rate and review this podcast. And on whatever platform you're listening to, if you're on YouTube, please subscribe and like this video. And remember, you were given power to create wealth. So go get them. Cheers.